Hey everyone, welcome to our brand new TV OPA channel. Today is a good Monday in Hong Kong and our relationship manager Leo has just received a client call. Let's see how the conversation goes. Good morning Leo, this is Isaac calling from here for Good Limited. Hey Isaac, how are you? I haven't heard from you since the meeting last week. Oh, I'm good. And I just want to let you know that we are going to open some accounts with St. Charlotte Bank to process our payments for vendors and our operational expenses. Can you get back to us on what would be needed to open those accounts together with the raise with these accounts? No problem. Let me get back to you within the next two days on the raise and the documentation to sign. Hey, Michael. Hey, Neil. Good morning. How can I help? My client here for Good Limited wants to process the vendor and operational payment via SCB, mm. and will eventually become their main operating bank and get more OPEC. And to do that, they will need to open both a Hong Kong dollar and US dollar account to make the payments. Can you please share the latest link rate with me? Okay, just a second. Okay, I've sent you the reference rate to you. It is published on a weekly basis, and I will send it to all the RMs and sales. By the way, I just bought there is a new learning video that talks about OPEC on the bridge and there are some tips for driving OPEC. Really? Can you show that to me? Oh, it's right here. OPEC stands for Operating Account. You may hear the term OPEC a lot in your daily work. OPEC are current and savings account deposits linked to operational activities of clients. These deposits are considered sticky as clients need to keep the deposits with the bank to avoid operation disruptions, even in a stress scenario. Such deposits have a lower LCR outflow as compared to non-operational deposits. So how do we access whether deposits are OPEC? At Standard Chartered, currently, clients' CASA balance needs to fulfill two criteria to be classified as OPEC. First, the client has to subscribe to either payment, collection, clearing, or custody service. And among these transactions, if the six-month average volume is above the threshold for the relevant subsegment, the balances are considered OPEC. For example, if an IC client makes more than 40 transactions every month, then the client balances are qualified as OPEC. So, what are the benefits of driving OPEC? From the previous slide, OPEC has a lower LCR outflow which allows more deposits to be deployed in high yielding commercial access. Next, as more balances convert to OPEC, the expected LCR outflow decreases. Last, this in turn reduces the amount of high quality liquid assets the bank is required to hold, assuming we maintain the same LCR, eventually reducing cost of funds and improving returns. Specifically for our cash business in some geographies, the resultant FTP could be higher for OPEC deposits under the one bank FTP policy. The difference in FTP could potentially be as much as 20 to 30 basis points, which means you could potentially grow your portfolio's cash net interest income on the same deposits by converting from non-OPEC to OPEC. And when we drive OPEC conversion through incremental transaction flows, it enables the bank to generate more fee income from those operating accounts. Oh, one more thing. Closer client relationship can foster more cross-selling opportunities like ethics. All in all, it will boost our revenue through different means. Now, our global head of cash, Alan, has some thoughts to share. In 2017, we've done extremely well uh, to get operating account. So we grow our OPEC 10.5 billion uh, which is a great achievement. And it's a result of a teamwork. To acquire OPEC is important, but to maintain OPEC is equally important. I think go to basic is the most important thing. Uh, we all need to understand which industry is our customer operating and how do they manage their payment and receivable, how do they manage their liquidity. So we need to understand end-to-end -end flow, how customers operate. And with that understanding, we can create a solution for them. For example, uh, we have an important customer uh, who that operates in multiple countries. So we have uh, local physical pooling in multiple countries. But they also have a regional treasury center. And we, have, we set up a notional pooling structure uh, for helping them to manage the funds regionally. Right, so that would help us to increase our operating account balances because we are truly the house bank. 
thanks Ellen for sharing some key message in driving OPEC. I'm Emily and I'm now in the Hong Kong office. Let's see what the RMs and TV sales have to say about OPEC. Hey Arjun. Hi Emily. May I know how do you normally start a conversation with clients in order to get more of their OPEC wallet share? Essentially, it's very key to understand one, where where's the business that has the maximum transaction flow and two, where's the business that has the most amount of deposits which are large and stable. And it's essentially very key as a bank to get both these businesses together. And obviously to get these businesses, you've got to be a bit patient, you have to see the longer term view. Um, and also you have to understand as a bank, what products we can offer which would force or maybe get the client to move these balances to us. Thank you, Arjun. Thank Let you. me go to another site and find another OPEC champion. Hey, Lewis. Hi, Emily. Can you share some quick tips in converting client balances to OPEC? I think the banking industry has changed quite a lot uh, the years. In the past, we are actually the service providers, but now I'm treating myself as a consultant more than ourselves. The key to capture more OPEC balances, I would say, is to have a general understanding of our corporate class requirements on an ecosystem deal. With our trade call list, we can propose a lot of structured trade finance solutions like trade collections and also trade financing. With this business, actually, we can capture our, a lot of very sticky cash business business with SCB. Thank you, Lewis. My colleague Michael has just bumped into our GCNA head of cash on another floor. Michael, I'll pass the time to you now. Thanks, Emily. Hey, Ricky, I know that last year GCNA did a good job on driving OPEC. And when you talk about OPEC in some time course, you mentioned a lot about core cash management. May I know how are these two related? Sure, Michael, good to see you again. Look, for me, it's kind of getting back to the basics. If you are the primary collection bank, you're the primary payments bank, you become the core cash management bank, and that's a great foundation then to start building other value-add solutions on. When you are the primary bank, the resultant liquidity is naturally OPEC, and it's very sticky, and so I think that's the key piece that we want to get to. And before you go into another meeting, do you have any final thoughts to share with us? Yes. For everyone out there, the race is on. So think about the client lens again. Are you bringing ideas? Are you packaging this? Secondly, we've got some great detailed MIS on every one of your clients. Um, it gives you flows, it gives you what is OPAC or nearly OPAC. Leverage that. I think that's a really, really key opportunity. And remember, as we bring a value add solution, I'll go back to the client again, that, be, that puts us in a much, much better and very differentiated position to become the primary cash bank. And all of that resultant, sticky, the street loves it, OPAC that we desire so much is the result and of course then it helps our cost of funds as well. So happy hunting. Thanks Ricky. And thanks all other OPEC champions for giving us practical advice on how to drive OPEC. We hope you enjoyed this brand new video from OPEC channel. And one last thing, we need your help to drive OPEC.